Good early afternoon. We are live here on the Blue Plate Special. I'm Andy Andrews. You have joined us live in Orange Beach, Alabama at Wisdom Harbor Studios located here at the Wharf. And um, not a lot of people pronounce it that way. I just like to make my pronunciations phonetic. So I don't say wharf, I say horf. And if you join us here, if you ever come, make sure you see the uh, escalator statues. We have Marlin statues down there, but the escalator statues are fascinating. And in our building, we actually have an elevator statue as well. They're lifelike. Um, you can stand on them and have your picture taken. Uh, but we're glad to have you here. If you're new to us, um, this is a, a show of ridiculousness, usually, and uh, we have we have a very big surprise for you. Now we got the trade going on, and so the trade is gonna we're gonna let you know what's happening with the trade. But I also have a very special surprise for you. But if you're new to us, if you're watching on Facebook, please make sure you click that notification button over there and turn the notifications on your phone so that. Uh, if we ever go live, you'll be notified. Um, then also, if you're on YouTube, press that subscribe button. Okay, press it as many times as they'll let you press it, because that really helps us if you do that. And also, if you're on Facebook, share. Okay, sharing is caring. And if you could share this to your feed, the button is down there, I think, to the right. That would be great. And so, hi also to uh, the Twitter universe and Instagram folks. What do you think about my shirt? What do you think? So this is uh, Sand Dollar Lifestyles, right up here, the cornerstone of the wharf. And I particularly like this one because as I walk around with this shirt, I see people kind of do a double take. What, what did that say? And it says sit is what it says. It, the word is sit. But uh, Pam, hi from Wisconsin. Glad you are with us. Who else is, who else is in here? Uh, Marcy Taylor, hey, how are you doing? We've got some amazing things. Uh, Sean Falls from beautiful Indiana. And uh, Beverly from Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm seeing a bunch of people. at Deanna Kirkpatrick, hey, good afternoon to you. And what about the guys? Let's see, any guys from out of the country? I'm just curious. Tammy, hey, how are you? Pam, glad you are with us. And so let me tell you, before we reveal the per, the the trade, which is just, I, I, it's just kind of freaking me out. I want to tell you something that I have for you. It's a surprise for me. It's a surprise for you. You know, one of my favorite things in life is to introduce somebody I love to somebody I love. I mean, that's just to me. That's the coolest thing in the world, and. And so, you know, I love you guys. And I have here with me today a guy. It's been like 75 years, 70, 80 years. 84. I haven't seen him in 84 years. 84 years it's been since we've seen each other. And with the windshield. With the windshield. With the windshield. It's been 84 years. And so, anyway, uh, he is. A guy that, though I haven't seen him in 87 years, I still tell stories about him. I've told stories about him for 91 years now. And so um, he is it's just truly, he is a lifelong friend. He's one of the greatest smart asses I've ever seen in my life. And, and uh, he and I, Worked on cruise ships together. Like First century. Yeah, ninety-seven years ago. Mayflower. Yeah, and uh, Mayflower. The the ship was the Mayflower, and um, so I'm seeing names come up. Thank you guys for being here. But I want to welcome. Do, which name do I say? Peter Gossamer. A uh, Peter Gossamer mm -hmm. from Gossamer Magic. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Peter. This is my friend Peter, <laughs> that I just. Have you got him on the screen? Yeah, there he is. Look at that. Look, I'm looking out in the studio. You look so <laughs> handsome. 
I mean, you look so handsome. To be a slumlord in New Jersey now, <laughs> you, you do look great. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, he is here uh, with, his, with his beautiful wife, Carol, and, and uh, she's sitting right out there. And we're, I'm so excited. And so what we're going to have to do, they just got here. And so what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to kind of catch up okay. on the air okay. in front of everybody. So you're a slumlord in New Jersey now. Uh, not anymore. I I got one condo that I used to live at, and I just rent that to a nurse who's very. You used very, to have like five or six rental properties. I did, yeah. Which is why I called you a slumlord. Yeah, 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 yeah. I grew so out of that. They were they were actually pretty nice places. Not really. No, no. no. <laughs> they weren't. So why why are you guys coming through? Well, um, at the middle of the pandemic, we said, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to stay in hotels. We're not going to be eating in restaurants so let's just look at rvs and so we find a class b and um, i don't know what that means it's just uh between an a and a c it's just a it's I just know a, that a small one okay. and um so um we ordered it and it took them six months and then they delivered it in the fall last year and um it sat in the driveway all this time and we're just looking at it. we're taking one night here one night there I mean, Carol wants to sleep in it, and I, I did my camping when I was young. I camped in the snow. I was a scout. I, I mean, and now she just wants to camp. And I said, no, I just want something to get us from a hotel to another hotel. And during the day, we don't have to go into a gas station to pee, and we can cook our own food. And I said, basically, that's what I want the truck for. Yeah. She's still anxious to park and sleep in a Walmart, and I said, well, I'll stay at a luxury hotel, and I'll park you outside my window so I can see you, and you can sleep in the truck, and, and I'll be uh, getting a spa treatment. Yeah. yeah so. Okay, well, good. You know, do you still do you still keep a website active? Uh, I haven't looked at it probably in a year and a half. So probably not real active. Yeah, no. It's You know, I, I, I think a couple years ago, um, even before the, the whole pandemic, I, I started to think, well, the shows that I like, uh, I, I, I'll make it clear, I'm a, I'm a magician. Yeah, so, it's, this is the great gossamer. So so um, I was doing shows, and it got to the point where if it was a high-caliber show, like you're, you're familiar with the shows that you do are like you know, up there, industrials, corporates, you got one shot to make it, and include um, Bob in accounting, and he's a, he's, a, he's a hoot, get him on stage. It's right. like... You know, I, and so I always had a lot of things that I had to do for them, and I had one shot to do it. Yeah. So I came to the realization that the best shows for me were like hometown fairs, festivals. They put me in the corner by the cow barn, and if people <laughs> see me, I'm a pleasant surprise. Ah! <laughs> All right, I'm a pleasant surprise because they showed up and, and they saw me on Thursday afternoon. But if I'm doing a corporate, they say, by the way. Gosmer is going to be here. It's going to be our year-end uh, show. You know, we're bringing people in international, and I he's going to make fun of Bob. And yeah. it's like I know the pressure. You got one job. You got one chance. And I'm, I'm just, <coughs> just having a hard time just wrapping my brain around it. Where if you put me in front of a farm, uh, you know, agricultural exhibit here, Gosmer Magic here, I'm a pleasant surprise, <laughs> other than a disappointment on the final night of the corporate. So and in the end, you know, it's it got to the point where it was it was much more fun for me. Well, I've se I've seen a jillion of your shows, and you're never a disappointment. We had a good run. You know, uh, Peter was when when I first started working on cruise ships. Peter was already there, established, and you know, it was all it, he was like a big deal, and he quickly worked his way up you were a cruise director for how many years uh i think i was on ships for about uh initially five years and probably my third fourth and fifth three years okay cruise director wow do you remember what you did to me the first week i was ever on the ship peter uh, have you here in front of your wife well, I and everybody? Do you remember what you did? I was remembering it this morning i, I don't i don't but i i probably will once you start the story yeah um <laughs> I, you, you know, this nobody knew that this was my first like long term thing that I could possibly have, and you know, and and this was, you know, and I was being paid three hundred dollars a week, and that was back when three hundred dollars a week was not a lot of money, but I I was desperate for this job, you know, and so they said the first. You know, the first week, 
tells the tale. And so we'll we'll know after the first week. And and so literally, you know, this was a Saturday to Saturday <laughs> run. And so literally Friday afternoon in bingo, Peter comes up to me and says, Hey, I've really enjoyed getting to know you. I'm really sorry it didn't work out. I said, What? He said, Oh, they hadn't told you yet. Just pretend like I didn't say anything. Pretend like I didn't say anything. <laughs> and you let me just like linger there for like about 10 seconds. He said, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They love you. And by that time, I was so crippled that I was like melting into the carpet. But it was like, oh my God. I mean, I, I mean, of course, you had no idea. I mean, you're, you're probably looking at me going, yeah, he don't care. He can go somewhere else. I, there was nowhere else for me to go at that point. And you told me, you said, yeah, I'm sorry, it didn't work out. I'm like, what, what, what? But, <laughs> you see, no, you hear I, me laughing? Know, That's kind of an evil laugh. I know right the, I know the buttons to push with entertainers, you know, because oh, <laughs> they're true. always like, they're striving for some type of acceptance. And, and that's funny. But, but in retrospect, when I became a cruise director and I, they gave me the newest ship in the world out of Malmo, Sweden, and they said, who do you want to be on your, your entertainment? And I said, got to bring in Andy. And they brought you, I don't know if you're on tour with Shaka Khan or wherever. <laughs> I was, but I was. Basically, they flew you in to do that opening night. It was the, the owners, Ted Arison and Mickey Arison were there and all the saints and Mr. Zonas. <laughs> Jubilee, <laughs> Jubilee, Jubilee, Jubilee. That's right, Jubilee. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, yeah, I I, 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 I wanted you to be there, and uh, that that was it. I mean, I, they said you could have anybody anybody in the world, and I said, bring that guy that was kind of iffy on the first week. I said, yeah, give, yeah. Him a, give him another chance. Do you remember what you did to me the first night? What's that? When I showed up. <laughs> Do you remember this? I mean, I, I, I'm just I was telling you, I got there mm -hmm. and. You know, the, the purser's desk, they, they tell me, they say, uh, we're getting your cabin ready. And I mean, because I got there right as you guys sailed. It was the inaugural voyage. It was a big, huge deal. And and they said, uh, <clears throat> you know, Peter and Carol are very busy right now. And so uh, if Peter said, would you please go on to his stateroom? And so I said, sure, you know, and... He said, they will find you there later. So I go um, to this stateroom. And, and of course, y you know, the, sh the cabins on the ships that I had were a little bit smaller than this chair, okay? <laughs> you know, a little bit smaller than the chair. And I walk into Peter's, like, suite, and it was like walking into a football stadium. It was just, like, unbelievable, you know? I mean, it was just beautiful. And I'm wandering around, and I'm looking, and... Go over to the desk and I look and I see some books and I see this Manila envelope. Do you remember this? <laughs> and the Manila envelope, it had in little bitty little letters up at the top that you know just like little writing it said, "Nude photos, Carol," and then something else you know like proofs, something like that. And it was just like in among the stuff. And I, I, I looked around, and this was before people were putting cameras everywhere. So I don't want to really worry about cameras. I was worried about my own character. You know, <laughs> if I, if I would, you know, because your character is what what you will do when people aren't looking inside. So worry about my own character as I opened the manila envelope and I pulled out a sheet of paper that said Andy will be down soon uh, make yourself at home uh, glad you're here Peter <laughs> and that's the only thing that was in the envelope do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I I vaguely do because I know that that was just the course of events as every day. Every oh day. my gosh, <laughs> Peter! What what is the craziest? You know, we, you know, you said a few minutes ago that mm -hmm. that you know the buttons to push mm -hmm. on entertainers, mm -hmm. and it's because you are one, and of course you do. 
Do you remember some, pushing some buttons with Jerry Goodspeed? Remember Jerry? Have you seen Jerry? Where is uh, he? You know something? I I visited him probably 20 years ago, and um, he was working on a riverboat called African Queen af, uh, down in Miami. Right. And uh, I, I just remember visiting him. He, he married this beautiful woman from, from Spain, and... Um, Nice people. But Jerry's always marched to the beat of a different drum. Really? Really? Yeah. You yeah. think? Yeah. I mean, Jerry was the first one to to prove to me that he, there is no such thing as a sane ventriloquist. Yeah, yeah. And I, I hate that when people lump us in as, as magicians with ventriloquism and mime. And <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I mean, I got a new one. It's, it's not a box. It's a, it's a triangle, you know. But um, Jerry, on my first day... Uh, on the ships and this is back in the days when you came on as an entertainer but you had to get up in the morning to do gangway duty then you had to sell bingo cards That's and do, run bingo do horse racing and i remember um on the first day saying to jerry i says jerry um where are you from and he just turned to me and he says i don't have time to tell you my whole life story and he walked away <laughs> And months later, he said, I'm so sorry about that, but we have so many people that come in and leave after the first week. He says, I just got tired of telling people my history because I knew they weren't going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, you know, that back, back then, I, I mean, it was kind of shocking to see how they ran those those ships. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they're registered in another country, and we both saw people, you know, entertainers that thought they had this long-term deal. Mm -hmm. They went in, knocked on the door Saturday morning, and said, get your stuff, you're out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we had a whole saying, so like, on Friday night before we docked, whose name was going to be on the cake? Because it would always be, <laughs> we enjoyed having you here, but here's your farewell cake. <laughs> <Yeah. just> like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do you uh, know, um, now, see, I, I, remember, I remember Jerry Goodspeed, I, I guess partially because I would my cabin backed up to his, mm. and I would hear him talking to that dummy in the room. <laughs> I, I would hear, you know, from the other other wall, I'd hear, <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was crazy. But Peter, I, I, you, and I know you remember this, but this still is one of my favorite things, favorite stories to tell. You terrorized him. And, and I just loved every second of it because he had a bit, and it really was brilliant what he did. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, double voice. yeah this double voice. And nobody can sing in a double voice. I mean, you, you know, nobody has two vocal cords. But but Jerry had this little dummy called Sylvester, and they ended the show with him singing. You know, let's call the whole thing off. Yeah, you know, let's call the whole thing off, and and it was. It, it it went on, and Sylvester would sing, and Jerry would sing. And then they get to the very end, and they hit the last note in harmony. And people went nuts. I mean, every time it happened, people went nuts. Now, what was really going on was Randy on the trumpet. He's in the orchestra. He would lean around. And he was doing the other voice in the microphone. He was the one doing it. But I would stand over there on the side with Peter, and Peter would go, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And Jerry would come back, and he would be so proud. And Peter would, Peter would tell us all. He said, everybody sit down. Everybody sit down and just act, act like disgusted. And so here, here, here he comes in, and Peter would go, man, we can't believe you do that. That's, you're just lying to him. And, and Jerry's going, what? what? Hey, Peter, just lying to him. And so one day you went, you said to him, he said, Jerry, I'm telling him. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him what you're doing. It's just wrong. <laughs> it's wrong, and I'm going to tell him what you're doing. And so for the rest of the week, you know, we're out there playing bingo, you know, and Peter's calling bingo, and he'll go, oh, 52, oh, 52. Oh, something. B, something. And then he'll go, B, 11. Hey, in just a minute, you remember Jerry Goodspeed? In just a minute, going to make a, an announcement about Jerry for you. I, 22. 
just hang on. You're not going to believe this about Jerry. And I, you carried it out forever. And then finally said something like, he is <laughs> He's got really <laughs> good, isn't he? You know, and, but Jerry was like, he was sweating. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was sweating. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I never met a sane ventriloquist. I'm yeah. sorry, Tim Hawker, what if you're listening? <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you have you seen him? You know, uh, uh, Tim was active on Facebook for a while, and then he just dropped it about three years ago, and I haven't heard from him since. We did visit him in Pigeon Fork. Yeah, he was up there for a long time. He's doing a great job down there. He's working with uh, David Fee, uh, and uh, David Fee since sold the whole business. Um, but uh, I think Tim's still down doing the Hatfield and McCoy show. Yeah. And it's funny to watch that show because he's like the, the guy, he's just a funny, funny guy on a, a banjo and he plays it all. But um, they start out doing ship things like take the spoon, drop it down your shirt and out the bottom, do the hat game. Da -da 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 -da. Really? And that's what they start the whole show with. And I called him out and I says, you are so, you are just so re regenerating the whole stuff, that, all the shtick that you learned on the ships. And he says, yeah, it still works. It still yeah. works. Everything yeah. old's new again. Amazing. I mean, he did the best Floyd the Barber. Oh. Hey, hey, yeah. Andy. Yeah, he did the best I've ever heard. So where is the, like after the ships, man, you toured around the world. I mean, you were doing these massive illusions, and you toured around the world. What What's some of the coolest places that that you've been, or the coolest situations you've been in? Uh, let me see. We went to um, Japan twice, uh, South Korea for about uh, six months. Did Guam, uh, did South Africa, jo Johannesburg. Um, a lot of times we were like on tours, like with ships, just going through Europe because right. the opportunity was there. I did Caracas about 10 years ago, just before it got really ugly down there. And uh, that was an outdoor amphitheater. And uh, they filled it. I mean, those people were hungry for entertainment. Yeah. And every time I went to the show, I had a guy with a gun taking me backstage and everywhere. Because it, was, it wasn't as dangerous as, as, it, as it is now. But another place that was kind of dangerous was Johannesburg. That was 20 years ago. And that was at a Caesars property uh in, in downtown and there was just carjackings but i don't know the world's changed a lot i'm just glad to be home just doing the county fair <laughs> where you're just a surprise yeah i'm just a surprise oh or even, even a ship you know we'll still do ships but I, I don't know i've gone through this this whole train of thought over the past year it's like i just feel guilty taking a job on a ship when i know there's people that are just getting ready to do them and suddenly they got snubbed out of their year. I have so much empathy for everybody that's missed a prom, that's missed a graduation, that's missed uh, a wedding that was invited people. I mean, it, the whole gamut, you know, right down to funerals. I mean, it's just so sad that the people that in the past year have missed out on so much. And it's kind of, I, I'll do ships if they call me. I would do corporate still if they call me. But at the same time, I just know there are people there that are just jonesing to get out there and do that. And they just got snubbed out of 12 months. Yeah. You know, what, what have you seen just in the past few months just watching this? Because I'm curious mm -hmm. that this argument about whether people should be allowed out or not, you know, is, is still going on. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, <clears throat> you don't really know what the virus is going to do. You don't really know what the vaccines are going to do. But there's been long-term studies on what being isolated will do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nobody ever seems to talk about that. Well, yeah, and the social, the social aspect of the, of the kids that are missing school as well. Right. I mean, I know you're talking about more adults. And, and no, I mean, hey, we have kids. And I, I mean, I watched that with Adam. You know, mm -hmm. he's a senior in high school now. Mm -hmm. And Adam, I mean, he had to do the, you know, the online thing for a long time. Yeah. And it. It's oh my gosh. Yeah, it's just uh, an absence of social, um, you know, interaction. It's 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 hurtful. So, that's what we're trying to do here: take away your hurt. <laughs> the blue plate special. <laughs> Jeff Harden says hilarious discussion. Well, good. I'm glad you're, you're enjoying us kind of reconnecting. What is the? And they don't even know, from my point of view, that you you're not even wearing shoes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not wearing <laughs> shoes. So, but I, you know, I do the, the way this shot is done. <laughs> they're lucky I'm wearing pants, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, um, I, 
what what was the what do you look at and there's was there ever like a disaster now see here's one thing mm-hmm. that people that when i talk about cruise ships with people that mm-hmm. most people never know is that people die on the ships all the time uh-huh. like all the time mm-hmm. i mean and you know you get a couple of thousand people whose average age is like you know deceased deceased i mean your average age is deceased Somebody is going to be double deceased on that <laughs> ship, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, what's the what's the craziest thing that ever happened to you on the ship? I've got one. I've got. Oh one. man, uh, you know, Carol and I are always saying we could write a book. Um, we were on a celebrity cruise ship, and uh, celebrity, uh, their security are all Israelis, and these guys, when they graduate from high school, they got to spend. Yeah. One year in the service. Yeah. So these guys are hardcore. And um, one morning, we read on the news, AP, that there was a SWAT team that boarded our ship in the middle of the night to remove a man from his, uh, he had a balcony, because he was planning on getting off in Panama to avoid persecution back in the States. Because he was a drug lord. So they had gotten a, a tip from somebody. They flew in, SWAT team overnight. They took the cabin above, the cabin below, the cabin to the right and the left. And at the four o'clock, the witching hour, just probably when they know he's asleep, they know he's half awake, they came right to the balcony, right through the window. They took him off, took him in the helicopter and gone. And, 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 and people were saying, you know, I saw a guy with a full face mask running down the wall. These are all SWAT guys, you know? And we didn't know a thing about it until we read about it in the news the next day. And by that time, he was in another country taking, you know, it, it's just crazy. I mean, you hear a lot of times about people passing away and, and, and things like that, but it, it was wild. There's, there's just a lot of, a lot of stories, a lot of stories. <laughs> I used to, on the ship you and I were on together for that long period of time, I used to do the bridge tour. Mm-hmm. You know, I would take people up. They, they gave me the sheet mm-hmm. of things to tell them about the ship, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember week after week after week, I'm taking a group of people up there, and I'm going, you know, the carnival is da 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 How many tons? da 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 And, I'm, you know, I'm getting all this stuff, and you know, we use how many eggs and right. how many uh, barrels of oil and all this kind of stuff. But one of the things that was on that, Thing was the Carnival is a double-hulled vessel, which means that if one hull is punctured, the other is there to you know mm-hmm. is there, and I'm doing it every single week. And and one week, <coughs> going out, and the staff captain's there. He goes, Andy, come in. So I come. I said, Yes, sir. He said, well, Where you get this double hull? <laughs> Thing. And and I said, well, it's it's right here. It's like it's on this uh, piece of paper, you know. This one, because I, I say it's right after the eggs, the double <laughs> double hold, you know. And he said, mm. I said, is is it not double hold? He said, no. We get we get breached. We sink like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> like oh great, okay. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I remember once I was on the ship looking out the back, and I could see all this treacle oil coming out the back of the ship because they had a leak in the engine, and it, it was a European ship, and, and I was sitting there looking over the top, and and I was saying, what's all that black stuff coming out? And the officer standing next to me says. Do not look at that. You're, 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 going to, you're going to draw attention to it. He says, walk away. They didn't want anybody to see that they were, they were spilling oil. Oh, my gosh. I was on the uh, – I, I wish – I really wish I had been on there when it happened. But I was on a, a, a ship that is no longer going now, and it was a French ship. I can't remember the name of it right now, but uh, the captain was Jean-Claude Guillou, was the captain. And he was very dashing and good-looking. And and, uh, and and so, remember Arthur Ashton? Mm-hmm. Okay, Arthur was booking all of us. He well, booked me in my first. Yeah, oh, me too. And so, But he went to that that cruise line. Costa? No. no. I can't. I can't remember. It seemed like it started with a P. P. No. No. P. No. No. Princess. No. 
I can't, I can't remember. But it, in any case, it was a French ship, and it was not that great of a ship, but the food was incredible, okay? Mm-hmm. The food was incredible. And the week after I got off, Jean-Claude ran that ship on the reef at Cayman. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and there it stayed for like a year. I mean, ran it up on the reef. Think his career was over? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's rough. I remember when a ship ran in, uh, right through a dock in, um, I don't know, Antigua or some, one of those islands. It just ran right through the dock. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of things that we can't say about <laughs> ships for fear of being killed to this day. Um, but what, what would be something, let's just let's kind of stop here. What would be something that you would tell people that, that if they go on a ship for the first time, they have no clues going on? Uh, you mean to avoid or to? No, I'm just saying they don't know this is going on. Uh, well, I, you know, I think that people go on knowing that they're a captive audience, right? So it's not like a casino in Las Vegas where, uh, you know, they uh, not getting good cards here. They'll go to Caesars or, you know, Lady Luck. But I think that most people realize that they've only got the same choice of food as everybody else. Uh, they've got the same cabin. I mean, they've got the same size of, you know, what, what have you. But I think that it's just really just a... I don't know. <laughs> you got me in a position where I... I, I know. You, I, don't, you, I you don't have to go ahead. Because I know. I, I, I Listen, trust me. But I, when I it, say go have a good time, enjoy yourself, make some memories. Don't think about anything about. else. Yeah. 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 I remember Peter would say some nights he would... It, there, the show would be going great and Peter would say, you think this show is great? <laughs> Just make your way down to the kitchen and scream immigration and see what happens. You know? <laughs> hey, thank you for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah. So, hey, stay here because I, I I'm going to tell them about this trade. Okay. And, um, you know, we've been doing this since the first of the year. We started with a safety pin. And so this is just kind of nuts what's happening. Um, we got up to uh, three Alabama Tennessee tickets that were traded for. Uh, it was the Emerald Emerald Isle Resort in Destin that the Alabama tickets were traded for, starting with a safety pin. Okay, and then the Emerald Isle Resort was traded for a, a recording session afternoon with Gordon Moat and some stars in Nashville, and then. <clears throat> then um, Clint Ricky got that, who is the world champion, taxidermist, best in the world, and offered for that experience to do somebody's, you know, do somebody's deer head, and it was going to be a pedestal mount by the best guy in the world. Yeah, Gordon traded for the Alabama game. Gordon did trade for the Alabama game. It was so it was the it was the Emerald Isle Resort. For the tickets, and then the tickets to Gordon Moat, and then Gordon Moat was um, Clint Ricky got that for his wife to take his wife to Nashville and experience that, and so now, so since Tuesday, we've gotten with there were there was a lot of interest in the clint ricky pedestal mount and if you listen if you want to see why if you want to see why there was so much interest in it go to ricky ridge taxidermy.com and look at what an artist can do i mean a, the best in the world ricky ridge taxidermy.com and um and so a guy stepped up, wanted that really bad because I, I told several people, I said, well, I think you're getting beat. And so several people came back and said, well, we'll do this. So what we have now is a brand new in the box Sony 85 inch X800H series, ser- series that the, the big monster LED, 4K, UHD, smart TV. I mean, this is like amazing contrast, clarity. 85-inch Sony, 4K, 
smart TV. Uh, it it displays like these just I mean l- literally lifelike reproduction. It has uh, two balanced speakers with the sound. Um, it works with virtual assistants for hands free control. And get this, get it's, you know it's obviously a big processor and the images and all like that. Uh, and it's ultra HD. <clears throat> all right, ultra HD. So you see these movies like. Like they're real. They got voice control remotes on those too. Voice control. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. It's not I mean, vo- I mean, you can. So you can tell the TV. Mm-hmm. You can search the stuff. What else has it got, Peter? Oh my gosh, it's got built-in Google Assistant for your voice control. So I mean, you got Google working for you, and it just listens to your voice and takes over. I mean, who needs to get out of bed for that? I mean, tr- I mean, truly, mm-hmm. my wife would love this because she she gets so mad. You know, we have like. Uh, like 37 remotes for our one TV. And, um, but this thing, but this voice control remote on this, not only can you say, find such and such a movie, get to such and such a channel, not only you say that, it connects to the devices in your house, like your lights and your thermostat. Uh, you can flush the toilet with it. You f- can you really? Yeah. Do you know that for a fact? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my wife uses it while she's in the bed, and I'm in the bathroom in the be- in the bedroom bathroom, and she flushes it just as a courtesy to herself. To herself with the remote. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we had a pedestal mount deer. Now we have a toilet flushing television. So that's what we got. That's what we got. That's what we got to trade. A Sony toilet. Flushing television, an 85 inch. This is a massive screen. Uh, the, the, you could display everything on that, but my nose. I'm thinking the the whole thing. Um, so, all right. So that's where we are until next Tuesday. The deadline is Tuesday at 11 a.m. because that's the next Blue Plate special. Uh, somebody had a question. That what was the question that somebody had for Peter? I want to see that if you can find. It. Oh. Here, here we go. Jeff Harden says, have you ever been too seasick when you were supposed to perform? Um, you know, it's um, actually no. I got used to it. Usually after you've been on a ship for a couple of weeks, and, and most passengers will agree that you get off even after one week, you're in the grocery store and you start to go like this. Right. And also you're in the grocery store, store going, hello, how are you? Do you have a nice day? <laughs> oh, that was a nice month because everybody's so friendly, right? Yeah. But um, uh, the one thing is that is when it's rough and you're on stage, you cannot have uh, illusions that are on casters. And what we normally do is we take an ashtray and you put the leg into the ashtray because then it doesn't roll. It just kind of drags. It's kind of right. like a... Like a, a, God forbid you should be cutting a woman in half and right, she, right, right. one half roll away from you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, there was one moment where I had a, a, a girl floating in the air. On uh, She was impaled, uh, actually just s- suspended, and the whole ship lurched. And that whole thing tipped in my arms and I had to push her back up onto the stand because the whole thing would have fallen down, hit a monitor. And uh, but you you really have to concentrate. I mean, you're you're looking at the audience, but you kind of kind of keep your eye on you know. Thank you very much, and back to the girl. Right? Man, I did. Uh, I was on the Southward mm. one time, and on the Southward is the NCL ship, and and they. I mean, usually they'll run from these big storms. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they'll leave people too, mm-hmm. right? I mean, should we tell them that? I mean, if you if there's a big storm and you're in St. Thomas mm-hmm. and they tell that ship to leave, you're just in St. Thomas for the hurricane, okay? Mm-hmm. Because they're leaving you. Um, but somehow, uh, the Southward got kind of caught in the windward passage, not in the not in the biggest part of the hurricane. Mm-hmm. But they told us later there were forty foot seas all right now as this was building i was on stage the first time this happened okay i was actually on stage you know how like a ski boat or something will jump awake and it'll Mm -hmm. land flat and go boom Mm -hmm. like that the cruise ship did that Mm -hmm. i mean it i i thought the sucker was breaking apart right and and my cabin was like up in the 
way up in the bow. You know, mm -hmm. it had one of those cabins they won't give anybody, you know, because it's like, <laughs> got angles right. in it like that. And I remember going there, and the floor fell out from under me. And then as I kind of hit, then it jams up, and my knees are going up around my chin. And I had to crawl out of there. But uh, there, but every the next morning, everything was like, it was smashed in the bars and the gift shops, everything. You know, mm -hmm. they had a piano go through a, a plate glass thing. Mm -hmm. It was nuts. But, of course, knowing cruise lines like we do, mm -hmm. the very next day, we pulled into St. Thomas and let everybody out. Mm -hmm. And you know that uh, Charlotte and Molly mm -hmm. Harbor, right? And that road that goes around it mm -hmm. like that. All those sailboats that usually are in there, they're all up in the hill, mm -hmm, up in the, mm -hmm. that hill. I mean, it just blasted right through there. But, you know. I, rem I remember uh, after that storm, you'd see um, sailboats that were just wrecked. And it said, uh, I don't know what the storm was. Thank you, Hugo, or, or something like, thank you, whatever the name of the alphabetized storm was at that time. That's rough. That's rough. The worst is uh, uh, getting seasick and lockjaw at the same time. That's rough. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you eat peanut butter on cruise ships? Because <laughs> it tastes the same coming up as it does going down. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, thank you for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. I appreciate it's it. Pleasure. So we're going to keep talking, but we're going to have to say goodbye to you guys. Um, Jeff Harden, we're going to listen to this orchestra piece that you sent in um, sometime today. Several guys in the office here in the studio have already listened to it. And they say that it's incredible. So I can't wait to hear it. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you Tuesday. Come on. Who wants the toilet flushing television? Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on.